Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is how we go about solving cubic equations. And I've got one here. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 10 equals 23x. Now the first thing I'd want to do is make sure that my cubic equation equals 0. And in this particular one it doesn't, it equals 23x. So what I'm going to do is subtract 23x from both sides. And I'm going to write this in descending powers. So we have 2x cubed, then we have minus 5x squared, but now I need to subtract my 23x and put it in here. Minus 23x, then we have the minus 10, and it equals 0. So I've got it in descending powers of x, and the first term here is positive. I'd always recommend that you have this first term as positive. If it's not, just multiply through both sides by negative 1, and it would switch all the signs. Okay. Now that we've got this, what I'm going to do is let f of x equal the left-hand side. It just makes the next part easier to work with. So I'm going to say let f of x be identical to that left-hand side. 2x cubed minus 5x squared then minus 23x minus 10. Now what we need to do is factorize this left-hand side. And what I can use is the factor theorem to factorize this expression. Because if f of x is a polynomial and f of p equals 0, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. This is the factor theorem. So I've got to find a value of x which makes this equal to 0. And one of the tricks here is not to just try any random number for x. Choose factors of 10 or minus 10. In other words, start with, say, 1, and if 1 doesn't work, try minus 1, and if that doesn't work, go to 2, and then minus 2, 5, minus 5, 10, and minus 10. And hopefully you'd have found some value of x that would make this equal to 0. Okay, well, let's, let's say you try f of 1. Well, if you tried f of 1, substituting x is 1 in here, you'd actually end up with minus 36, not 0. So x minus 1, by the factor theorem, can't be a factor. Try next f of minus 1. If you tried f of minus 1, sub it in there, you'll get 6. So clearly it's not 0, so x plus 1 is not a factor. You might then go on to say, right, OK, I'll try f of 2. So if you try f of 2, what you'll find you get is minus 60. So x minus 2 is not a factor. Next, though, you'd hopefully try minus 2. And if you were to do f of minus 2, you'd find that this comes to minus 16. Let's just put this in. This term comes to minus 20. This term here, so I was looking at the wrong line there, this term here comes to plus 46. And then finally you've got the minus 10 on the end. And if you add that up, you end up with equaling 0. So therefore, because it equals 0 by the factor theorem, x plus 2 must be a factor. x plus 2 is a factor of f of x. Alright? Now... What does that mean? Well, it means that if we go back to this equation here, okay, then I can express the 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 23x minus 10 as x plus 2 multiplied by what we call a quadratic factor. And quadratic factors are going to have the form ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So if you multiply this with the quadratic factor, you will get your cubic polynomial here. And don't forget, it equals 0. Now we need to find out what this quadratic factor is. And in an earlier tutorial, I showed you that you could achieve this by either dividing x plus 2 into f of x, doing algebraic long division, or another way is to just 
not necessarily guess these constants a, b, and c, but it's it's fairly easy to work them out. I mean, take for instance the a first of all. You've got to get 2x cubed, and you can get that by doing x times ax squared. That will give you ax cubed. It's the only x cubed term you're going to get, and it's got to be 2x cubed. So that means that a there has got to be a 2. So we'll put in a 2. The next easiest term to get is this c. The only way you're going to get a constant on the end, minus 10, is by multiplying the 2 with the c. So you've got 2c must come to minus 10. So clearly c must be minus 5. So I'll put that in. Now as for the b, okay, we've, we can do this several ways. We can either look at the x squared terms, and if we do, we should end up with minus 5, or we could look at creating the x term, which should be minus 23. It's up to you. They're both just as, uh, um, how can I say, difficult to work out, although they're not that hard, but uh, they're just going to be of the same degree of level of difficulty. Look, I'm going to go for the x squared term, minus 5. And to get the x squared term, you'd do x times the bx, that would give you bx squared, so you're going to have a b x squared. Where's the other x squared term going to come from? From multiplying the 2 with the 2x two squared, that's going to be 4x squared, so you'll have plus 4x squared. And that's got to be identical to the minus 5x squared. It's got to come to minus 5x squared. So, can you see that if you look at this equation here, you can see that the b has got to be minus 9. Minus 9x squared plus 4x squared would give minus 5x squared. So b's got to be minus 9. So I'm going to pop that in there. Minus 9. All right. So we've got that factorized. We'll take that out. OK. So there it is, factorized. Well, I say factorized. We've got a quadratic factor here. This quadratic factor can actually factorize further. So we've got our x plus 2, and we're going to have two, what is called two linear factors here. 2x squared has got to be a 2x here and an x here. And for minus 5, it's got to be a plus and a minus, and a 5 and a 1. Which way round it goes? Well, just experiment. And if you experiment, you should come up with that. 2x plus 1 x minus 5. Expand that out, you get 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. So where does this take us? Well, when something's factorized like this, it means that any one of these three factors can equal 0. So therefore, in the usual way, you would say x plus 2 equals 0, or the other factor, 2x plus 1 equals 0, or the third factor, x minus 5 equals 0. And what's that going to lead to? Well, from this one, x would equal minus 2. For the other one, 2x would equal minus 1, leading to x equaling minus a half. Or, in the third case here, x would equal 5. So there you go. OK, the solutions to our cubic equation.